All right, so um, we have this question here that says, solve the following inequality and graph the solution. So if we were to um, multiply this thing out, five, five minus X times five minus X, we would get a parabola and right, if we, I mean, if we were to graph it, so it looks something like that. So let's imagine the parabola crosses the X axis two places. Doesn't have to cross it two places. It could just cross it once. Doesn't have to cross it at all. But this is one option. It could cross it two places like this. If I lift the parabola up, notice it doesn't cross it at all. It could be like this, or it could cross it just once where the parabola is sitting on the line. But let's pretend it crosses it twice like that. What I'm going to do first is, is just figure out where it crosses the parabola. I'm going to find these X values by basically setting this thing equal to zero, okay? Once I find those values, then I'm gonna test points between them. I'll test a point here. Let's say this point ends up being three and seven. I'll test a point less than three into my, into my uh, function. And since it's above the X axis, I should get a positive value out. I'll test a point between three and seven. And since it's below the X axis here, I should get a negative value out. And then I'll test a, a value above seven. I should get a positive value out. So if I'm looking for the values, the sections of the graph where it's specifically less than zero, the answer here would be uh, X is between three and seven. Okay. We're going to do that. Obviously that's not the answer to this one. So let's just figure out what this specific answer is going to be. So again, first thing I'm going to do is figure out, when this thing equals zero. So I have two, so you can just kind of pretend that this less than symbol is an equal sign. On the fact, I'm just gonna write that. X minus five, X minus five equals zero. Well, either the first thing equals zero, or the second thing equals zero, either way you get the same answer, X equals five. So this only has one point where the parabola touches the X axis and that's five. So all we have to do is test five, okay? Or test numbers on either side of five. So I'm gonna test the number less than five. Let's say we test uh, four. Plug four into this function. I get four minus five is negative one times four minus five, negative one times negative one. I get a positive result. Okay, let's try a number larger than five. Let's say 10. I get 10 minus five is five times 10 minus five is five. I get a positive result again. Well, there's nowhere that I end up getting a negative result. It's only zero at five. So we're looking for the values where it's less than zero. Well, that doesn't exist. So the answer here is going to be does not exist. Just to show you, um, let me pull, pull up a quick Desmos graph. A visual representation of what's going on. This is X minus five, X minus five. Um, I wanna know where this thing is less than zero. Well, we know it's zero at X equals five, but it never dips below zero. So that's where we get DNA. And I believe if it's DNA, there's nothing really to draw here. Okay. This one might prove to be a little bit more interesting. So this says solve the following rational inequality. State your answer using the interval notation. So the idea is the same here when we have a rational uh, expression, except I want to find the values. Notice here I only found the values that set it equal to zero, in which case it was five and five. I'm going to do the same thing, but I want to find the values that make the numerator and the denominator equal to zero, because this is going to imply there's an asymptote and things can happen at the asymptotes. So I'm going to find the values that make the top zero, in which case I get X equals two. And the values at the bottom become zero. Well, I end up with X squared minus 16 equals zero X squared equals 16, we get X equals positive four and X equals negative four. So those are my three values. So if I put them on a number line, 
negative 4, 2, and 4. I'm going to pick values between each of them to determine what, all I care about is what the sign is. So let's pick a number out here. Let's say negative 10. If I plug negative 10 in here, I get negative 12 over 100 minus 16. Negative 12 over some positive number, this is going to give me a negative result. Let's pick a number between negative 4 and 2. Let's try 0. I get negative 2 over negative 16. That's positive 1 eighth. Pick a number between 2 and 4. How about 3? Three? 3 minus 2 is 1. Maybe I should be writing these down. 3 squared minus 16. 9 minus 16 is negative 7. That's a negative. And let's pick a number greater than 4. Let's do positive 10. Plugging in 10, I get 10 minus 2 on top is 8. 10 squared minus 16, that's 100 minus 16. That's 84. You get a positive result. So where is it negative? It's negative from negative infinity up to negative 4. So all of this, it's negative. And from 2 to 4, it's negative. So to write that interval, it's going to be from negative infinity up to negative 4, not including negative 4 because it's actually equal to 0 there. Or I'm sorry, that's an asymptote, so it can't equal negative 4. Union, big capital U, the values from 2 to 4. And that's going to be your answer.